Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Lizical where we do everything card making. And today I had a card planned that kind of, you know, didn't end up happening because I finally got my hands on the waffle flower postage stamp dies. So I decided to take the stamp set that I was going to use today, which, sorry, is unfortunately retired from MFT. Um, but there are plenty of other sets that you could use with this postage die. I encourage you to shop your stash as always. Um, not everything I have is in stock and that's unfortunate, but I do like to use what I do have and not use new stuff all the time. As I've mentioned before, my videos are meant for inspiration and not direct copying anyway. So let's just keep that in mind. So onto the card, I am using the Hero Arts Antique Hero Map uh, for the background and I'm stamping it with Lawn Fawn's Doe Ink. I do have to do this quite a few times because A, I've not used a stamp before and B, this is a tiny ink cube. <laughs> so it's, you know, not the most ideal thing to use for background stamps, but all I have is ink cubes. Um, I don't have full color stamp pads for anything just due to spacing. It's just a lot easier to um, purchase the ink cubes instead. And the dough ink is my favorite, especially for stamping on the Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And this actually looks pretty dark right now, but it will dry back quite a bit. It kind of almost does like if you were to use a Versamark ink on there as like a tonal uh, background. Uh, but like a little bit darker, which is why I love this. Um, it just gives that little bit of extra um, definition. And now I'm going to move on to stamping and coloring the postage stamps, which I'm very excited about, guys. I have so many ideas for this. You're going to see this a lot. Uh, I'll try to space them out as much as possible. Uh, but what I did was I bought the postage dies and I also bought the like masking stencil for it. So this just kind of like blocks out those areas. I haven't bought any other of the stencils that go with it to like make the like snowman or the gingerbread or the poinsettias or the the really cute set with the seagulls in it. I only know one person I would make a card for for that. So I don't think I'll purchase it, but I do love it. Um, but I, I just want to use this with like all of my stamp sets. Um, it's just like so much fun to play with. I actually really enjoyed doing this card and I loved playing with this. There's, you know, some things you learn while you're going. This is my first time using it. So I did mask off with the stencil and then I'm going to stamp the images in there. This one, I kind of missed that little bit on the bottom right hand corner there. But once I color it, you're not even going to notice it's there. Um, the girl stamped pretty good and it does pr stamp pretty good to the line, I think, because the waffle flower grip mat that I'm also using. It, it has a little bit of give to it, so it allows you to push into it a little bit more. I think next time I'll probably put this into my Misty and do it just in case there are errors like this. I have actually cut four or five extras of these postage stamps just so that I don't have to, you know, pull it out every time I want to make a card. Um, so I'll, I just have them ready. And right now I just like wiped off the ink. Probably should have done that off. I took it off and then I was like, oh no, I need to leave it on because I wanted to ink blend the background a little bit. I'm just going around the edges with that same dough ink. And then I'm going to color the rest of them with the Copic markers. I just wanted to add a little bit of color to the background. You could use your Copic markers for that as well. But the way this um, postage stencil um, blocks it off, it does it just inside the stitching lines that are there. So it kind of adds like a double border in a sense. Like you could color up to the stitch lines if you wanted to, but I definitely wanted to maintain that thicker white border that this gives. And I really do love the way that these pop off that background, especially since I did the entire background in a print. Normally, if you've been here for any amount of time, you guys know I love my white borders on my cards, but this time I decided to go with the Desert Storm cardstock for the base, and then I just fully stamped it. And I really love the way this turned out. Um, the stamps on this, because of the white borders and because of the colors that I used, really makes it pop. And I think also adding that little bit of the like brown blending in the background with that dough ink 
uh, just helps it like kind of highlight the characters because when I was ink blending I tried very carefully not to touch the characters at all. I just wanted to um, get as close as I could with it. I could have also ink blended in blue to give it like a bit of a sky look which would have been nice and I think that was my original plan but I just ended up using the dough ink because it was already on my desk and I actually do love this way this turned out. But I think that, you know, next time maybe I'll try it with the blue. I think it would also help that pop a little bit more and just add a little bit more color to the card. I kept this as a very, like, simple color palette, I guess. I used reds, browns, and grays. Um, I added a little bit of gold here and there just uh, to the chest and the edge of the pirate hat where, like, piping would be which is what I usually do for coloring for this as well. <laughs> I think the only thing I did different for coloring was the shirt on the pirate. I usually color each stripe differently, but I saw one online earlier where they colored the whole shirt one color, which I would never think because like to me the stripes are there to color in each stripe differently, but I think it gives it more of a, you know, Linus from Charlie Brown look and I love it. It's so cute. Um, so I thought I would give that a go for today. So maybe I'll do it a little bit more often. But yeah, so I will play music for the rest of this coloring session and get back to you when it's over. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to cut these apart. There's like two main lines where you can like cut straight across, which is that top one by the skinnier one and then in between these. So that's the way I decided to cut it. Um, and then I'm just going to cut the three that I need. There's a few, one that I had to throw out, I think because I had too much ink on it. I should have masked the other ones off, but again, I have a few sheets of these ready to go. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. The other one's got like very little ink on them, so I'm think I'm going to salvage them and try to use them for another project. And then I decided I was going to add this Ahoy Mate sentiment. And we're also just going to cover up that bottom right corner of the treasure chest stamp just because I did smudge the gel pen a little bit. If you're going to color with gel pen, leave it to the end. Uh, don't do it in the middle like I did um, because you're going to smudge it with your hand multiple times. Um, but here I am, I'm just adding a little bit of foam tape to this center one with the girl and the telescope on it. And then I was gonna do this one on top of that one, uh, but I decided to tuck it underneath just so that I could glue that down flat as well. And then the only thing that we popped up would be the girl. And then I'm also going to pop up the sentiment once that's done. So I just lifted it a little bit so I can tuck this little guy in here. And then I'm just gluing it down flat. And then I'm going to heat emboss the Ahoy Mate sentiment on some black cardstock. I did stamp it twice because the first time I kind of put it down onto the block instead of picking it up with the block. So I think it got a little bit of a curve to it, which I didn't realize until I put the embossing powder on it. So I see here, oh, it's looking a little curved. I'll try that again. So I'm just going to like lay it flat and then pick it up with, with the acrylic block, which is the way you should do it because it just makes sure that the sentiments are laying more naturally flat and then you're not warping it in any way. And then I'm just going to use my heat tool. I'm going to heat both of these. I'm going to end up tossing one out, but it's just, you know, less mess <laughs> for me um, to heat emboss both of them. And then I'm going to cut out the bottom one and like I said, toss out the top one. And I'm just using my black eraser here to go around it just to make sure all that powder's off. And I will trim this and prop it up on some foam tape. Then I'm going to end up adding a couple of gold confetti bits, like the smallest ones in the assortment, to the treasure chest stamp because the 
ones that I drew on there with the gel pen don't stand out enough. There are some in the stamp set, but I didn't want to use those. Uh, and it was kind of like a last minute decision to add them anyway. So I just thought I would help cover them up with the confetti bits and it gives it a little bit of, you know, shine here on the card. So that's pretty much our card for today, guys. Thanks again for joining me as always. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe because I love to have you here. Uh, we always have some fun videos and new launches coming out within the next month. Just FYI. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. And I'll be back on Sunday for my hashtag holiday card hijinks where we'll be doing a 3D card. So stay tuned for that. But until then, thanks guys. Bye.